All right, all right. Greetings and salutations. Today, I'll be giving you a tour of the mobile food unit. We're going to start on the outside. I'm going to show you all the components. Then we're going to swing on into the inside. And I'm going to show you what's going on, what the health department is looking for, um, the division that I have in mind for upgrades uh, and all that good stuff. So if you have questions about anything you see, you know what to do. Drop it in the chat for my YouTube people. Um, for my folks that are audio experience only, I will do my best to be super descriptive. But uh, feel free to hop over and join us on YouTube for this one because it's going to be a visual tour. All right. So let me give me one second, guys, while I flip um, flip the camera around here to the back camera so you guys can see. All right. Cool. All right. So we're starting on the outside. One of the most important parts of any food truck or mobile unit is the access to fresh water, all right? So, well, you know what? Hold on, let me back up. Let me give you the full the full view first. She's a cute little thing, all right? Not too big, but big enough to do what we need to do, all right? It's just not the biggest trailer I've ever seen. It's actually on the small side, but again, big enough to do what we need to do, okay? Um, purchased this from a local individual seller um, for $10,000. However, uh, I would not say, and let me go whip around to the back. If you're on the market um, for a trailer or for a unit, a truck, cart, um, $10,000 is actually on the low end for something like this. Um, but you'll see why in a minute when I show you the inside because it does need some work. Okay, so there are some add-ons and some things that I want to do to this, which will likely run somewhere around um, 15, maybe 20,000. We'll see how it goes, right? So anyway, so most important part, access to water, okay? So this is our freshwater tank, and this is our wastewater or gray water tank for dirty used water. So what we would do, trailer's not in use at this current moment, so there's nothing in here, but we would put clean, fresh, potable water, um, water that you could drink inside of here, right? Uh, and then it will pull as needed into the sinks on the inside through here. And once the water is used and we're done with it, the wastewater um, runs through these PVC pipes into the gray water tank. Sometimes these are located on underneath the trucker trailer. They could be on the side. Um, this particular tank is on the front, which... <clears throat> I actually am not a huge fan of uh, because I think I would like to put the generator right here. Um, but that's that's something that will have to be done later on. So uh, this lever valve is used to, uh, you can put a bucket or something under here or wherever your waste, waste uh, compartment or um, whatever you're using to collect wastewater. Pull this, boom, water comes out there, okay? Um, it's a little battery on the side, um, and it's, it's a lawn and garden, just a little battery, uh, which is used to power the, um, pump for the hot water. All right. This window, this goes up and down. Okay. This guy goes up and down. So when not in use, that will come down and cover the service windows. Okay, so we got two service windows, which slide open. All right, and I'll show you that from the inside when we get there. Okay, um, the previous owner did not um, use an external power source. So this generator did not come with the unit, I actually bought this. And I actually think um, I'm going to have to upgrade to a bigger one. So I don't think this is going to be enough power. Um 3550 running watts i don't think that's going to do what we need to do so i'll probably end up probably reselling this i've used it twice so um i should be able to get probably full retail um especially since i uh, also got a warranty on it and everything through bass pro shop that's where i bought that bass pro shop it was on good sale um so the previous owner um she was cooking outside like in a tent setup and she actually just threw this grill in for free, which was nice. Um, so propane uh, power grill, right? Um, 
couple nicks, right? It's missing a couple handles, a little bit, a little bit blue leg, right? Uh, it's missing the external handle here to pull, to pull and maneuver. Um, but other than that, it looks to be in pretty good shape. Just needs a good cleaning. Needs a good little dust off, right? And um, it did not come with the propane, so I got a propane tank, which was uh, about sixty bucks. So there's a lot of places like Home Depot, Lowe's, um, a lot of gas stations, at least in our area, they have these blue rhino, um, blue rhino setups where you can um, basically rent a propane tank. And then once you use it and it's empty, then you just um, take it back and swap it out for one that's full bring the old tank back and then after the initial like 60 bucks or however much it's about 20 25 bucks to refill all right hey um this ramp actually was uh an additional purchase as well it did not come with the trailer i believe i got this from harbor freight tools if i'm not mistaken or it could have been amazon i was looking at multiple places so um it was somewhere around a hundred bucks and some change, I think. So, not bad, right? To so be able to roll stuff on and off, because um, you do. It's got a little step up, right? Um, the trailer did come with some equipment. Uh, it came with two of these Heat Max food warmers, made in the USA. Halala. All right, uh, it, cool that it has the monitor to monitor the temperature for you. Um, this rack actually goes here. Removable racks, right? And so this is not to cook food. This is to hold food hot. Okay, so once the food is already cooked and warm, for instance, if you're going to do some burgers or hot dogs on the grill, for instance, and then boom, pop them over here in some pans. Um, that will hold it warm. You can control the temperature here, monitor the temperature there, uh, and then hold it warm during this. So we got two of those. I uh, just took off for space. I'm just right now. Oh, just to know. Um, these little screws here are put in place, like, just to hold it in place during movement, so during transportation. So uh, I thought that was a neat little trick. Monitor, monitor the temperature of the any power source, like the generator or anything. The trick, <laughs> I put this uh, paper towel roll here to keep it slightly ajar, just a little bit. Um, so when we first got the trailer, all these racks were kind of mold and stuff like that on there, just from being not on constantly, right? In closed space, it's hot. If there's any kind of moisture in there, uh, you don't make sure the heat and the coolness to cool it down, then boom, that's that's just a recipe for uh, bacteria and mold and stuff like that. So we sanitize everything out really, really well. Uh, and then just to keep a little bit of airflow, um, I just did that for now, right? But if it were on, I would absolutely have this in here all right so you always want to monitor your temperatures but absolutely have that in there to make sure that my temperature stays at 41 degrees or lower um in order to keep food out of the temperature okay temperature danger zone is when food illness starts so anything above 41 degrees but up below 135 degrees that's they love that all right it's not hot and it's not cold um that's when things happen but don't get me going on my sand sanitation because i'll be on that for hours but this is an extender that goes out of the back i'm not gonna show you only because this door is giving me some challenges um and you can like there's even a little crack right here so when i open it it's too hard to close back the and so it's like I have to put it again. 
in order to close it and lock it a situation, so I'm not going to do that right now. Hey. How you doing? Can I get a meeting two sides? Oh. <laughs> not today, but we're working on it. Is this for the um, yes. Yes, yes, we're working on some things. All right. So one of my assistant principals just um, rolled up, said, she, can she get a meet in two sides? <laughs> not today, ma'am, not today. We're working on it, though. All right, so uh, the back door, um, again, it needs some help. So that's definitely on my to-do list of things that need to be replaced or maybe the, the seal. I don't know, some of the seal, I don't know. Oh, let me put it here. What I would like to see happen is open space. Um, when, when, when we purchase the unit, however, and you see there's like a little shelf here, which is this is okay, like a little storage for area to act probably a gas range, right? I don't we're going to do a lot of frying. We necessarily want fryers, but I definitely want um, a heat source. Around so you can see the whole thing. There's no heat source in here. So that's going to be the biggest, probably most expensive um, upgrade to this unit. There's no fryer. There's no stove. Uh, there's no flat top griddle, right? I mean, we do have the external one, but if you don't want to cook outside, um, or if you want, you know, I don't mind cooking outside, maybe setting up a tent, something like that initially. Um, but I eventually want a heat source inside the trailer. So, uh, I'm thinking this space here, right, will be perfect. And what is up here now I have to have a hood, right? So a hood insulation there, here, um, that's going to be uh, the equipment plus labor to get installed. Uh, and that's probably going to be the biggest upgrade expense there. Okay, so the hood, all the um, people quickly farm gas and things away from um, uh, where you're cooking at, right? And I can show you what it looks like uh, inside. So I bought that little, uh, more buffer. okay, I bought that little extender. Um, which is cool. This one's All right, so where were we? Let me go back. I just had to say that. All right. Um, I believe that. I believe this is a a a, a heat pump, but the water is not working correctly right now. So the very very first thing that we're gonna do is fix the water, so that. It can power this three compartment sink. Take all this um like ugly putty or whatever it's out, reseal it with some fresh seals. They're kind of like not legit right now. But the sink itself, other than that, is in good shape. Right? So you have to have in every county I've ever worked in, you have to have a three compartment sink. First compartment is for washing. Middle ones for rinsing, third ones for sanitizing um, to properly wash your, your dishes. And even if you don't wash dishes on your mobile unit, uh, I'm anticipating that if you're watching this, you probably are curious about getting a mobile unit or you have one or, you know, at least the thought has crossed your mind. So um, just keep in mind that even if you don't wash on your truck or on your trailer, you still have to have the ability to. So make sure you check with your... Um, health department and in your county to get the proper county rules, right? Of what before or start building. All right, this is a right. Got little lock. This is a serving window. He's one for taking order. The other for um, handing off orders, or you can take orders on both and then hand off orders out the back, or whatever. However, your heart's content, right? More storage. There's a lot of little storage nooks and crannies. 
So again, the previous owner, she was pre-cooking all of her food and she, she was pre-cooking like certain things and then doing the rest of the cooking on the grill and then holding things hot in the warmers and in um, like a three uh, compartment crock pot, right? And so she gave us, she just threw those in too, gave us those, everything you see on here, pretty much, um, she just, she threw in as extras, like, hey, take this, take this. So that was pretty, pretty cool. A little cash box, right? Well, those cable things are mine, but everything else you see, uh, with the exception of the generator and the ramp, um, she she put in, she threw in. So that was that was nice. Um, you know, I always tell people when things are for the kids, you know, we're gonna use it as an educational component for school. Like, oh, let me see how I can help you. Like, yes, thank you. Let's help the children. All right. Uh, this is a hand wash sink gotta have that again every county i've ever worked at you can't the sanitizer is cool you know in a pinch but you always want to have access to be able to um, have hot and cold running water and wash your hands with hand wash soap uh and then you also must have paper towels or a way to dry your hands all right so if you use paper towels it has to be disposable towels not a towel like that you don't want a microfiber towel you got something disposable because microfiber as much as i love them as much as you probably love them um they can hold food bacteria things of that nature um so five things a hand wash sink must always have or hand wash station must always have um hot and cold running water access to that paper towels a sign that talks to you about hand washing the importance of hand washing um you must have a receptacle receptacle to throw away any um discarded paper towels which i don't have to show you but just imagine a tiny little waste we have like in your bathroom right um what else did i miss one i think i got them all plus the sink itself obviously um you don't want to use like um a bucket <laughs> or something like that right uh it has to be something that allows the water to run all right, and then you can see um, more PVC piping down here, um, the high and cool um, connections there, okay. Um, that little battery charger is for that um, little battery I showed you on the outside, goes next to the, to the water station. So that's the little tour. That's the tour of our unit. Hold on, let me, um, hold on, I'm coming back, coming back. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. So that's the tour of our unit, guys. Um, I'm going to take you step by step as we build this out. Um, a couple of things I didn't point out, like the lighting and also like the ventilation, which are not currently working. So uh, that's a, that'll be another uh, that'll be another thing. First things first, I'm gonna get the water running. Secondly. Uh, after we get the water running, the most important thing to me is like to get a heat source in here. And then we'll just keep building on it as we go along. But once we get the water running, technically, we can go ahead and call the health department and ask them to come and inspect and um, and make sure we're up to code to be permitted. And everything else is, is just add-ons that I want to do, uh, but that aren't necessarily a requirement, right? And so um, I'm going to show you all before I go. I'm about, to, I'm about to wrap this thing but I'll show you a couple things I missed. So you want to have some kind of light, right? So this is the light source, okay? And then I want to also install some type of ticket rail system, maybe um, here, or since this is going to be where the heat source is, the rail here, um, we can get somewhere, right? The power, another thing I would like to change, which is not a requ requirement, but... When you plug into the power source, the power source is underneath the trailer, right? So let me, a perspective. I'm on the outside on the front. On the bottom left, the heat source, I have to literally get on the ground. All right, good thing the camera's not on me right now. And that plug, to plug the power. I don't like that it's, I don't like that it's under there. That's annoying. So I'd rather, I was talking to a gentleman who hopefully will be able to do some work for us on the trailer. And he said he can reroute it so that everything will um, be from the back, right? So we don't have to have the generator in the front. And then that will also include like um, moving this power source. 
connection there. All right. So, um, I guess that's it, guys. Welcome. Welcome to the trailer. We're going to do some marvelous things with this little guy. We're going to take you step by step along with us in this journey. So, again, any questions you have, comments you have, let me know. Happy to give feedback as we go along. Um, happy to answer any questions that I can. I don't know everything, but um, I know a couple things. So, every, you know, what I do know, I'm happy more than happy to share. I hope that you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for tuning in to the Hospitality Hacks Pro Show. I didn't even say hello to the people who don't know me. I was too excited to do the tour. <laughs> but my name is Tasha. For those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a culinary arts and hospitality teacher. And here on the Hospitality Hacks Pro Show, we talk about uh, tips, tricks, and tidbits to help your operation run smoother. Um, we talk to interesting people in and around the industry, and uh, we do some cool things. Uh, and so taking you along the ride as we start a food service concept from scratch, from the ground up, um, we've got a hold of a mobile trailer, right, that needs a little love, a little TLC. Uh, but we're going to give it a little TLC, get it up and running, go through some menu development, start on um, understanding and what we want our brand to be right and our brand message to be uh then we're gonna start selling some food all right uh there's of course more things in between that but but come along with us join us on the ride join us on the ride happy to have you all right i'll talk to y'all soon see you next week we out